Synthetics or synthetic? <laughs> More of the story here is uh don't experiment i mean okay you can experiment um don't trust descriptions on amazon so i thought i would do a simple kind of flush where i, I drained it right out of the top from what i was looking online it looked like you could get four quarts out of the top now i did not get four quarts out of the top i only got uh two and a half that's all the more i can get out of it um, I just thought I'd do a simple, you know, pull it out, put some in, kind of dilute the old fluid. You could see it was dark. Uh, the black one's even worse. So, I mean, eventually we're going to drain the pan on this, and that still doesn't get all your fluid out, but it'll get a lot of it out. But anyways, I thought I was smart, and I found this dipstick on Amazon for what it said was this, the Ultima the uh, like a whole bunch of them and this was right so i took two and a half out i put two and a half back in put this in it wasn't on the dipstick ended up putting a, a whole another quart in there still wasn't on the dipstick okay so then i was like i don't want to I, I drove it i brought it back it, you know it felt all right but i didn't want to chance it so i started looking it up and I found on a forum that the measurement uh, for the dipstick for one of these, if you're going to do it, has to be between 25 inches and 26 and a half inches. It's 26 and a half inches till it bottoms out. So um, I don't know if there's a company that makes an actual dipstick for this one. This was only 10 bucks, and I was thought I was being smart. I was like, I'll be able to check both of them with this. No, no. So. Uh, it was a good thought, but this is only 22 inches, so it doesn't even touch the fluid. And even with that extra cord in there, it still didn't touch the fluid. So that's why I was like, I better look this up before I go dumping too much fluid in this thing. Um, so I, I did go ahead and just drain another cord out after I drove it. Uh, it's still dark, uh, so we're still going to, I'm going to do a, a service here eventually. This CVT fluid is it's expensive okay six quarts cost me a little over a hundred bucks so it's not something I would do every I'd say every 30,000 miles but yeah so yeah I just thought this would be a quick little a fun thing I could do at the beginning of the video and it's that it's never just quick and easy is it it's never never just quick and easy okay another thing I learned is sometimes hood struts the cheap ones are not that great well these ones are ultra powered okay so it's even it's hard to shut the hood but on top of that it only opened the hood to like right here so i had to rig a bolt into the end of that with a nut that kind of locks it on there on both sides so that the hood would lift up because like i could barely get in the engine bay it was right here i'm telling you some of these parts i've been getting they said they were for the Murano. I don't know which one. Not this one. I want you to see how strong these hood struts are. 
Look. It, it slams open now. All right, so I think what we're going to do, I'm not going to get a lot done in this episode. Uh, we leave for vacation here in a couple days, and i got to work on somebody else's vehicle. I've been working on a bunch of other people's stuff, okay? My friends, my family, and i got to work on another family member's car tomorrow. So, like, honestly, I have not done hardly anything in this garage. Well, besides that work I just did with the coils and stuff on the engine. It's been over a month, okay? Between that video... And the one before that, there was a lot of time in between. So don't think that we, we're going on vacations every week. It's been a couple months since that last video. It's just I have not... I had a whole bunch of videos stored up, not edited, and I spent a bunch of time doing that and then working on other people's stuff. So I, I haven't got a lot of time in here. What I want to do, I'm hoping I can get into the passenger airbag to um, unplug it because... I want to put that crash module in, and I'm going to put a couple... Actually, I have the seat belts and everything. I was just going to, you know, plug eliminators into the seat belts and stuff, but I have them. I forgot about that. So I have the seat belts, I have both airbags for the driver's side, and I have the airbag for the passenger side, but I'm not going to tear the dash apart right this minute because there's a lot involved in it, and I don't have a lot of time today to do that. But what's going to help me today... What we're going to do is uh, we're going to hook up this new scanner I got. And you guys get to see it because we're doing a review. All right, so this is the V-Diag VD70. It's an Android-based scan tool. It does pretty much anything uh, a regular guy like me or you is going to need working on these cars. I'll show you all the special features. It'll read all your modules. I mean, it does pretty much everything. And being that this isn't a Bluetooth unit, it's a corded unit, um, it's going to be a little bit more budget friendly and then it has a camera on the back it also has a support arm here which is made out of metal it feels like aluminum or something like that but that i like the ones that have these because you can like clip it on top of your steering wheel it's pretty nice the software looks pretty nice too i have i did go through and update stuff but i haven't used this in a couple weeks so you get three years of updates with this thing which is awesome because um once that runs out, it's normally pretty expensive. Let me uh, let me see if I can pull this up and see how much the updates are after that. It's normally a couple hundred bucks per year after that uh, for most of these scanners. But three years gets you a long time of updates. So you can keep updating this thing so you have the latest software for the cars you're working on. All right, so I tried to figure out um, how much the updates were. I don't honestly know. and I can't find them online if you guys you know maybe put it down in the comments but three years is going to get you a long time so special functions on here you can do key programming um instrument cluster i'm not sure what all that entails uh, power balance most of mine have that too i don't know what that entails either seat calibrations tpms reset eep rom i don't know what that is uh, language change, transport mode, control unit reset, BMS reset. As you can see, it, I, I'm not going to go through all of these, but I'll just glance through this real quick. Um, there is SRS. Um, it'd be nice if I had any codes on this new uh, module, if this could somehow erase them. There's airbag reset, and then there's SRS. So... I don't know what the difference is between these two. And well, I'm not seeing Nissan in here anyways for that. So airbag reset. Airbag fix up? What's that? 
All kinds of stuff in here. All kinds of goodies. Airbag repair and airbag replacement match. Now, I don't know. I've never ran into any vehicles where you had to match the airbags, like, to the module. But I imagine if you needed to, this is what you would need. I don't know, honestly. I'm just, I'm winging it here. Anyways, I'm going to be straight up with you. I'm looking on Amazon pricing on these. I'm seeing best one I see right now, $3.99, and you save $100 on it. It's probably a click, yeah, click a coupon there, and you get $100 off. So you'll get this for $300, bucks, basically. Um, it's bi-directional. It does 31-plus services and three years of updates. So, yeah, it's, it's a pretty good unit for what it is. All right, so now we're going to plug this thing in to the black Murano and we're going to see how many 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 codes there are because I know there's probably a lot oh my gosh my leg is swollen before that first clip of the video when I was uh doing a transmission service on the white Murano right after that video I went to a hiking trail around here called a thousand steps went the whole way to the top Decided I was done. Turn around, come back down. I made it like 10 steps down, and a European hornet stung me in the knee. That about took me out. I punched that sucker in the face, though. At least I assumed that was his face. I don't know. I hit him. He was stuck in my leg. I'm plugging the scanner in. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm not trying to kiss the steering wheel. I'm trying to plug the scanner in. They put the scan port on these things, like, way down underneath. Ah, I got it. I'm going to do a full system scan on this thing. Auto scan. Nissan. USA. There it is. All right. Auto scan. And we're just going to let this thing go. All right. So as I expected, we have 14 airbag codes. Um, two, in, two faults in the radio uh the audio is that supposed to be video video intelligent power control module engine room what is what is that can communication circuit ignition relay on i think i did yeah those are passed these are passed Body control module, they're all passed. All this stuff is going to get deleted. Shift position status, ignition relay. This is all stuff that was stored in it. Transmission is current. CVT judder. Oh, that's not not it's not a good one. <laughs> it's not a good not a good code. Um, yeah, we'll we'll try to clear that. But current airbag codes for days. Frontal collision, that's the one that you will not, you will have to reset the module for. Um, I have another module, so we're going to throw that in, and hopefully there's no collision codes on the one I got. But if there is, I can send it in, we'll get this one cleared, it'll be fine. I'm going to go ahead and clear all of these. The transmission judder one stayed. Ooh, that's going to be a fun one. <laughs> really don't want to put a transmission in this thing, but I, I can tell you right now, and I know a lot of you have said in the comments, Transmission, transmission problems. But watch for transmission problems. If you look these up, okay? Um, and I, I go by this with everything. If you can look up at the junkyard how much an engine or a transmission sells for there, if the price is low, there's no demand for it. So that means it's reliable. Um, it's just like Subaru. Like the, the Impreza's that I liked... They have really cheap engines because they're reliable. Now, if you look for a WRX motor, you're looking at five grand for a high mileage motor, and that's just mm -mm. these transmissions for these are cheap because they're actually really reliable. Now, 2015 was a fluke. There's a if 2015 models they have a bad transmission, um, and then the old ones, the very first ones, they didn't have very good transmissions. They have since fixed all the issues. These things are a lot better, and I know a lot of it scares a lot of people. Uh, but these companies, they learn from their mistakes, okay? And they they 
fix problems. So these transmissions are actually really good now. They work really good. They're very reliable. And like I said, if you need to buy one, they're like a grand, if that. Some of them, I've seen them for less than a grand. So it's really not a big deal, honestly. This, I just noticed I had, um, okay, a lot of these scanners have this feature, but if you're hooked to the internet, you can go to the code and then you have a feature that it'll search the internet for that code and problem. Um, and all, and it brings me right to YouTube videos on how to fix it. Now you can, this is an Android based unit, so I can click on a video and I can watch the fix for this code. Yeah, there you go. In fact, this scanner is so powerful that I just erased the calibration data off the transmission and I can't redo it. Because you need a QR code on the valve body inside the transmission. <laughs> yeah. So, um... Yeah. Um, there's that. <laughs> So anyways, like I said, they're pretty powerful. If you want to get your hands on one of these, there's going to be a link down in the description below. Um, don't mess your transmission up like I did, kids. So I've been trying to do a relearn on the clutch on this uh, since I did all that. Um, honestly, that way back, I got a 2015 Nissan Altima. It was a really nice car, honestly. Um, it got sunk in a mud pit. Didn't know it until, uh, but it needed a transmission and it was getting a shutter code and it was messing up and everything. I had somebody put a transmission in that for me and it did not drive right, right out the gate. And he didn't do anything, he just put the transmission in and stuff. After I drove it for 20 minutes, it relearned everything and then it was driving fine and everything. So I'm thinking that's what needs to be done on this thing. I think it was sitting in the yard. I remember the, the terminals were really corroded it was acting up and stuff so it might have been dead for so long and it just forgot the parameters and it gave me the shutter code or whatever it, it probably needs to be driven honestly um, but if that doesn't work then I'm I don't know <laughs> I don't know what to do actually I'm gonna let this thing go for a while because it says this uh, clutch relearn thing takes from what I'm reading a half an hour it says on here a few minutes few minutes and a half an hour that's a big difference so I'm gonna sit here for a while I can hear the CVT wind up and down on its own I, I kind of hear it doing its thing so I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna wait I keep getting one code that I don't know and it, it gives me a key system error kind of like you know what I was having with the hood latch switch and stuff this is saying the park neutral safety switch um, and that started popping up after I did this, so I'm assuming it has to do something with the transmission relearning. Um, when I put it in drive, that goes away, um, the, the warning on the dash. But then when I put it back in park, then it comes back. So, I don't know. Guess we'll see. One eternity later. Alright guys, so I'm back from vacation. Uh, crisis averted. I did get the IP characteristics reprogrammed into this transmission. I just had to take some time and think of what to do. I needed that QR code. Okay, so in the meantime, I have ordered more transmission fluid. Also ordered, there's two filters on the transmission. There's one underneath the pan, and then there's one on the side of the transmission. You have to unbolt a cover and take a cover off. I'm going to be saving those filters for mine when I eventually do that and take the pan off I got a pan gasket and stuff like that uh, not gonna do that on this one but we are gonna be draining the transmission and putting newer fluid in but I did get this thing reprogrammed and uh, I had to use sometimes I'm not always a dummy okay if you have a shutter code they say uh, reprogramming the the IP characteristics will fix that at least from what I'm seeing. So the shutter code I had is now gone, okay? Once I did that, it was gone, but then it was giving me a key system error code because I, I deleted the um, memory in the, I don't know if it's in the TCM. I, I don't honestly know, okay? We'll just put it that way. I don't know for sure. 
I just know I deleted something in there. So then when I would put it in gear, it would shift hard. It would go clunk and it would hit reverse and drive the same way. That's because I deleted the the uh, parameters. And uh, to relearn it, there's a QR code on top of the transmission. It is also on top of the valve body. That is why I bought all that stuff because I was like, this QR code that is on top of the transmission, the very top corner, let me show it to you. All right, so this is, you know, the picture I got of it. Let's see if we can, there we go. See how it's really faded in the top corner? Could not get my scanner to scan that. Whenever you go to reprogram it, you scan that, it reads the code and then programs it. Now, each one of these transmissions is coded differently. So, I it, part of me was like, let's go get the QR code off of mine scan that one see if it works um i contacted nissan they said that wasn't going to work so what i did was i took that code and then i darkened it and tried to make it readable but then on top of that then i scanned it with my qr code scanner on my phone because the the scanner on your phone can read hard to read ones um it can sometimes correct uh, misreads and stuff like that so I scanned it got the code which was very long where is this code so this is the code that I got from scanning that with my phone and instead of scanning it into my scanner I typed that in took me like 10 minutes okay and then I hit program and it programmed it and now it shifts smooth and the shutter code's gone. I'm not saying this is going to be the fix for the shutter code. But I am saying that as of right now, we have no problems with this thing. So like I said, all these scan tools that I use are very powerful pieces of equipment. And you can mess stuff up if you're not careful like I did. I'm going to get into the transmission's special features. And then I'll show you how you should be doing this. Alright, so I'm in the transmission module now special functions now there is a read ip characteristics to replace transmission module and then there is the right characteristic replacement transmission control module what you're going to do is read the ip characteristics this is this function when replacing a tcm um ip characteristics data recorded to the tcm will be saved in the diagnostic equipment by this function so you're going to hit ok um, start and it just saved the information from that to rewrite it so now when I go back in to rewrite it which I'm not gonna do it because it's already done now um, that is the smartest way to do it but also check the Q QR code up there because that's gonna be your backup that, that's the one that's on top of the shift selection uh, switch on top of the transmission and that's under the intake tube you can see it once you remove that resonator box, it's right beside the battery tray. It is now programmed, and I'll show you. So before, when it was in park, I was getting a key system failure. And you can see, detected my key one. Now, like when I put it in reverse, it would slam in. You see how smooth that went in? So now I go to reverse. Go to drive, and it goes in smooth. Uh, very happy that I got that done. I, I was so worried. The fact that I got it without having to do that is a time saver and a money saver. Um, Unplug my scanner now. But, yes, powerful piece of equipment. Scanners, be careful with them. This comes down to the fact that I'm not professional, kids. I say this many times and you guys are always like, oh no, you're really good. I, a lot of this stuff I'm doing for the first time. Like, I never work on the same vehicle. Well, okay, you shouldn't say I never work on the same vehicles because I do get a lot of the same vehicles over and over. But every new vehicle I get is a, basically a new vehicle I've never worked on. And I don't take schooling for any of this. So I don't, I'm not up to date with everything. So I'm just learning from the internet, from the YouTubes, Google. Anything I can, that's how I learn to do what I do. So, 
not a professional. I'm, I am a professional learner and mistake maker. <laughs> now, we're going to get back into the scanner, but first, I am going to replace some airbags. First, I'm going to get into the passenger side, see if I can get uh, the glove box out to get up in there to unplug that airbag that's in there uh, to uh, put some eliminators on it. Uh, until we get it replaced because I'm not doing that on this episode. That's probably going to be a whole episode by itself replacing the dashboard. Um, this episode, we're going to get the crash module out, seat belts out, uh, steering wheel, knee bag, and uh, get those all replaced because I have them. So I need to get up there. I want to unplug the battery, but I got to get this seat out first because this seat is in the way. So there's covers on these seat bolts that need to be pried up and I can't get them with my fingers I'm trying and it's a power seat so I can't just move it forward and backwards at will so I'm gonna get the seat unbolted then undo the battery <laughs> All right, I'm down to plugging the seat in. I didn't put everything back together because the dash has to come out. And there's a lot of that would have to come back out again. So I just plugged everything in. Now, these uh, airbag dash, uh, yeah, airbag dash, airbag dash, blah, 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 dash airbags. Oh, God. They're like steering wheel airbags, the way they, they're set up. And they have two plugs in them. And the plugs do not come out of the bag the, the the back of it like the steering wheel bags do it looks like it has two plugs on it um but they're they're like part of it like i 
I was trying to unplug this one because I was going to use this harness. It has it like a separate harness that plugs in right there. And uh, I'll show it to you. So right here, this is the, the separate harness. And these are what look like the plugs. Um, they do not come out of the bag. But thankfully, these ones melted like the steering wheel ones do. And uh, when I broke them out, the actual plug itself came out with it so I could plug in those eliminators so it thinks there is a bag in there. So all I gotta do is plug the seat in and then hook the battery up and then we're gonna see if this crash module has any crash codes on it or not. I'm hoping it, it's not, but I mean, who really knows? I got it from a junkyard. They said uh, be, to be safe to uh, clear the codes or uh, have the module cleared so that's where we're at now I did have to I use the clock spring from my white one and uh, put new plugs on I did order those that I'll show you so I got a bag these are the steering wheel plugs they're a little bit different the wire colors are not the same but I just made sure that the correlating wire that goes to the plug the way it's supposed to be was soldered in. So, soldered those plugs on, hooked the bag up, everything should be good there. Now, let me do this stuff off camera, this, the seat and the um, a battery, and then we'll start this thing. Well, I'm not gonna start it. Well, I might start it. We'll hook the code reader up and we'll see what is left on this thing. Hopefully nothing. Last piece of the puzzle. Well, the airbags didn't blow, so there's a plus. Okay, so we still got an airbag light and a seatbelt light, which I'm not liking. It's probably the crash module. Let me check and see what it says, because these seatbelts should be good now, and... That's no bueno. All right, so I'm doing an automatic scan. Oh, I do still have a transmission fault, which might just need learn, but I mean, it's not giving me a light up here, so. All right, so this is a much better scan than what I was getting. So what's the transmission? Um, pressure solenoid. Oh, I couldn't learn that um, solenoid. I tried to do a learn procedure on it, but since I deleted the parameters, it wouldn't let me, so I might have to try that again. Um, active vent circuit short. Active vent. What did I... I I'm, I'm not sure what that is, but for airbag, that, that's it. Active vent circuit short. Do I not have it plugged in? Part neutral switch BCM one was a passcode, so that's not current either. That was from... And the transmission code, I don't know. My only remaining code is this active vent circuit short. I got rid of all the airbag codes except for that one. That's the only one. Now, I hope it's not a hard code in uh, the module, but from whatever vehicle it came out of. But, it, I mean, it, I, it, since it's current, it shouldn't be. It should be a passcode. Um... Let me see if I can look this up. If my calculations are correct from searching the interwebs. Airbag over here. So my eliminators are probably... Let me try a couple of different ones. I have some different ones. Um, but apparently those are not sending the signal that or resistance that it needs to read for it to think that there's an airbag in there. So that's what's going on, I believe. And... Uh, let me see if I can try, I'll try some other ones if I can get it to go away. So here I was trying to, getting ready to, to jumper wire, you know, here. And then I noticed this. What is this? What is this thing? This has to be what is shorting out. And if I can just take this out of here and plug it into my current one, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to get that off, get it plugged into that harness. And, uh, yeah, this should be the fix.
Better yet, instead of taking that thing out, it has a plug on it too, so we put an eliminator on that, eliminator on these. Now, I disconnected the battery when I did all that. I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect the battery and see what's up. Come on, Jeebus. Be if that is the problem. No, it's, oh, oh. There it went, there it went, that was it. Put this mic up in here, shut the door. The seatbelt lights on because I don't have my seatbelt on. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. I just went through, I did have a past um, code for the uh, active air vent. I cleared it. Now we have a clean bill of health. So now, next episode, on to the dash, which is going to be a job. A bunch of little screws. Um, I don't know if I'm swapping these speakers over. There's speakers in that dash. You might just leave them in it. Uh, it's the same dash, but all these trims and everything, all the little screws, the stereo. So I'm going to learn how to take that out. This vent is broken. Um, wait. Is it broken? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's broken right here. This wheel's broken, pushed in. So that one doesn't come with that, but I'm going to have it out. So I'm going to try to fix that. I do need to get a new um, fuel door thing. This broke. So you can still use it, but it's dangling. Wow, no, you can't use it because the cable's not attached. The cable's there. So, yeah, I'm going to try to get this new piece and then what else oh i need to get a fender flare anyways we're on the right track now i'm i'm back at it so this weekend i plan on getting this dash out so we have a clean bill of health on this thing finally <sighs> that was a job anyways if you want to see the rest of this, come back for the next episode. So if you guys like this video, smash that like button, consider subscribing. Hit that dislike button if your mom wants me to blow her airbags. I'll see you in the next episode on Rack. What's going on down here? You seeping? Huh? You seeping? People said they want to see more of you. Okay. Oh, look at that. There you go. <laughs> He's such a good kitty. He got bathed today. <coughs> He's a clean You clean? Toe beans. Aw, oh, tuck them in. Here's mommy's boy. You seepy. Are you seepy? He's a seepy boy. Oh, he's so seepy. You got toe beans. Let me see Let me see all these toe beans. I got to piss them off. Look at, what, just thumbs? Hey, this is a thumb. There's like two fingers on there, and then there's four up here. He said, don't touch my toe beans Stella's up here behind mommy she got bad today she's not feeling it I was looking for Sully and I found him what are you doing in here they don't see these pens as punishment they like to hang out in them this one especially huh Oh my! How was that? Huh? Sully. Do you want to say bye bye? Nope, I want a bath. <laughs>